our lungs may keep us alive. But they also come in handy for other less vital tasks. A deep lung full of air from Maria can force up to 10 pints of air into the raft. Normal breathing only uses about one pint. We pump a pint of air in and out of our lungs with each breath, 15 times a minute. During an average lifetime, 13 million cubic feet of air passes through our lungs, enough to fill a football stadium. John has become a top athlete by training hard to make the best use of his body and lungs. Breathing as deeply as possible, he can exhale an impressive 6.5 liters. That's almost 14 pints of lung capacity, a good two pints more than the average person. But his lungs still contain a quart of air that no amount of force can push out. The oxygen we inhale reacts with fuels in our muscles, creating a form of internal combustion that provides our muscles with energy and keeps our bodies warm. To bring John's performance up to its maximum potential, his training is monitored in a laboratory for Olympic athletes. A computer analyzes the data from his body, his heartbeat, his power output, and most importantly, his oxygen consumption. To simulate the demands of a real race, John uses a bike in a fitness test designed to take his body to total exhaustion. This carefully monitored test pushes him to his limit and helps him fine tune his performance in the pool. Each breath is forced down through a labyrinth of tubes inside the lung. The air passages split over and over again into ever smaller tubes. In his race, John must pace himself, using each breath as effectively as possible. The efficient transport of air to and from his lungs is critical if he is to win. As John works harder, his consumption of oxygen rises. With each breath, the lungs take in 100 billion trillion molecules of air. Only one-fifth of these are oxygen molecules, the gas that keeps us alive. The rest are mainly nitrogen molecules, an inert gas that flows in and out of our lungs unchanged. Deep in his lungs, the walls of the air passages pulsate with John's heartbeat. The beat increases as his heart vigorously pumps more blood around his body. John's blood is quickly stripped of oxygen as it pounds through every blood vessel in every straining muscle. It's hungry for oxygen when it returns to his lungs. With his body starved of oxygen, John is in pain. Only the conscious instructions from his brain stop him from quitting. This mental control makes the difference between a good athlete and a great athlete. The branching maze of air passages ends in tiny tubes, each draped with miniature airbags, the alveoli. We each have 700 million of them. The alveoli mark the end of the road for the inhaled air. This is the inside view of one of the alveoli. Only one hundredth of an inch across, its walls are only a few millionths of an inch thick. 
so oxygen can diffuse straight from the air into the surrounding blood vessels. The blood's role in transporting oxygen is so crucial that the lungs have their own blood supply. One half of the heart is engaged solely in pumping blood to and from the lungs. An intricate network of tiny vessels carries blood depleted of oxygen to the alveoli. This is one of the densest networks of blood vessels anywhere in our bodies. Tiny capillaries are wrapped tightly around each individual air sac. The oxygen in the alveoli crosses to the surrounding blood, where it combines with the chemical hemoglobin, turning our blood a brighter shade of red. Because oxygen doesn't dissolve well, hemoglobin is essential to our survival. Without it, oxygen couldn't hitch a ride in our blood. Without hemoglobin, our blood would not carry enough oxygen to keep us alive even when we're resting, let alone during vigorous exercise. Hemoglobin is packaged in special cells, the red blood corpuscles. We each have 30 trillion of these microscopic cells. If they were placed side by side, they would reach halfway to the moon. Racing through John's body, hemoglobin readily donates oxygen to his muscle tissue. Far more fit than the average human, John can move oxygen with high efficiency. His oxygen intake has peaked at 25 times its normal rate. During this fitness test, he's generated enough energy to power a light bulb for 12 hours. He knows just how hard he can push himself. As the fuel in John's hard-working muscles combines with oxygen, it creates a waste product, carbon dioxide. This gas dissolves in the blood and is carried back to the lungs where it's expelled into the atmosphere. The gas we exhale is a hundred times richer in carbon dioxide than the surrounding air. John swims to win, but sometimes we swim to survive. Our bodies can hold only a limited amount of oxygen in our lungs and in our bloodstream. Unless Maria reaches the surface, she'll black out in just two minutes. She needs to use all the precious oxygen she stored in her body. Her brain is the most sensitive to the falling level of oxygen. We can survive without eating or drinking for days, but to live, we must keep breathing. 